I'm going to start by using this medium-sized dagger brush. It's the Face Painting Shop 3 8 dagger brush. And I love dagger brushes. I love pink tips. If you have not used a dagger brush to do roses, I highly recommend it because they have a lot of flexibility. And I actually really like doing roses with them better than other brushes. So I'm going to go ahead and get that submerged in water. Now one thing with dagger brushes, um, people don't know how to load them because they are an odd shape. What I recommend doing is the same thing you would for like a three quarter inch, or here, I'll grab one. So here's a three quarter inch angled flat. So what I would do with this is I would just press it into the cake and push, right, to load it. Pretty self-explanatory. You want to do the same thing with this. See how I had this vertical to the cake? and not at an angle. With dagger brushes, I think people tend to think that they have to hold it at an angle to the one stroke, but really you also wanna hold this pretty vertical to the cake and load it so that you're getting the bristles pushed down and loaded. I hope that makes sense. Um, so you can see I'm holding the dagger brush almost vertical to the cake. This uh, split is Magpie by Tag, and the gray in the middle is pretty worn down, but I'm going to use it anyways because I love it. So I'm a little dry, so I'm just going to dip right back into my water. And then again, instead of holding the dagger brush at an extreme angle to load it, I'm going to go back in pretty much vertical to the cake and load my dagger. So if you're having trouble loading your dagger brushes, I hope that helps and I hope it makes sense. So I'm gonna get this loaded and then do a very gothic Halloween-y rose. All right, so I'm gonna start with the outer petals and I'm gonna go ahead and place my dagger brush down, push out and wiggle in a U shape and then pull the toe of the dagger brush back in to create that petal shape. Now I'm going to do the same thing close to this petal and you can go over it or you can go right next to it. You can do um, roses in so many different ways. One thing that I think makes roses look better is if they're not that consistent and not that perfect. So I think if you try too hard to make each petal the same, that makes the rose look like not a real rose. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep adding my outer petals and you can see I'm actually making one side a little bit smaller. So those are the outer petals of my rose. Now I'm gonna go ahead and let this dry a little bit and I'm gonna load my dagger brush up again with paint. So I'll go right back in to my one stroke and load that up. I do need to either repair this or get another Magpie one stroke because I really wore out the middle fast on this one. Now another tip that I have is if you are, this one's not so bad, but if you're working with a one stroke that the white tends to disappear very easily, what you can do is you most likely already have activated white because you're painting at a gig, right? So you might already have a little bit of activated white sitting on top of your cake. I'm gonna go ahead and activate this for the sake of our, our video here and to show you what I mean, but if I have a cake where I'm struggling with keeping the tip of whatever color combination I'm doing on that rose nice and clear and white, I can go ahead and load my color and then I can just run the tip of my brush, whatever brush I like to use for roses, back through the white that I already have activated and it's gonna clean it up and keep it nice and bright. So I'll show you what that looks like. So I'm gonna go ahead and do another 
layer all the way around and then do the inside of this rose because I have time. If I didn't have time or I was on a, on the job, I would probably just go ahead and start with the middle and finish it off, but I do have time. So I'm gonna go ahead and add another layer of petals. I'm gonna make them smaller again and you can see how I went in between those two petals rather than going over the first petal and over the other because I want this to look more natural and organic. So see how nice and crisp that white edge is? That's from running the tip into the white. So I'm really dry again. I think my paint's kind of dry right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and reload. And I really like how crisp that looked, so I'm gonna go ahead and drag the tip back through my white to get a nice, crisp edge on these other petals. So I'm gonna do another petal right here, and then I'm going to do a couple petals here on the bottom as well. See how that looks nice and layered and it's nice and crisp and bright. So when you are painting with one strokes, one of the keys that a lot of people figure out eventually, but in the beginning they kind of don't realize <laughs> is such a key component to working with one strokes is to constantly reload. You can constantly go back into your paint and reload and clean up those colors because as you paint, and you run that brush over the strokes you've already done, things get really, really muddled. So just always reload and you'll see a huge difference in your finished designs. Okay, so the center of the rose can be in multiple directions here, but what I definitely wanna do is try to go in between one of these petals because I think that looks best. And then the other thing I wanna do is I wanna angle it and I'm gonna go ahead and put a couple marks here like this. I want that rose bud to be in a triangular shape, not a square shape. So I'm do it here and show you. If I do this, and it's very squared off, it, it looks okay, it's not bad, but it's going to look much, much better if I angle it this way and I do a more petal-like shape for the center. See the difference? And then when I swoop that over, it looks much more realistic rather than very squared off. I hope you can see the difference with that little example. Okay, so I'm gonna get reloaded here and I'm going to get my tip nice and emphasized with white and do the inside part of my rows. So I'm just gonna pull that shape right over now this is definitely one of those, um, the inside is really nice to have that emphasis of white. And I'm getting my cake a little, a little muddy here, so I'm gonna clean it up. Go ahead and dip that tip back into the white. And then when I do that inside little curve to create the petal, see how bright and crisp that is. So now for this part, because we want to finish off that gap, all I'm going to do is lay the toe of my brush down, push, pivot, and pull to create that little petal floating. So I'm going to do the same thing on this side, only I'm going to pull it across a little bit further, and I filled in that gap. So that is a very, very quick and effective way to do a flower with a dagger brush. And I really enjoy doing uh, flowers this way. Now if any of your petals end up getting lost, you can always go back in quickly, run your tip of your dagger brush over the white and just go in and kind of highlight them and clean them up. 
You can even feather it down in if it looks too much like you were lining it. Um, it's really not necessary on the job. I find that most people are just amazed that you painted a rose on them very quickly, so wouldn't worry about it. Okay, so for the leaves, I'm gonna use another tag split that I really, really love, and it is called Dragon. Since this is kind of a Halloween dark rose, instead of doing green, I thought this would be fun. Now I do wanna show you kind of a don't with leaves as well. A lot of times people will take any color and just do a leaf kind of extended out of the rose, something like that. And it's fine, however, it looks like it's an extension out of the rose rather than behind the rose. So I'm gonna show you what I try to do instead to give it a little bit more of a full realistic look. Okay, so what I'm gonna do instead of pulling the leaf out this way is I'm actually going to put the brush horizontally behind. So I'm gonna start my leaf big and that's gonna give the illusion of it being behind. So if I were to actually be looking behind this rose, in the end it's gonna look as if the leaf started way back here under the rose and come out. So hopefully I explained that well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my brush right up here on the corner and I'm gonna to start to wiggle out and I'm gonna pull it right back and behind. And then I'm gonna fill in with that orange. And it's gonna look like a big leaf coming from behind the rose. See how that looks? And then I'm gonna pull the tip and drag it in. to create more of that little detail. So hopefully you can see the difference between those two examples. Now I'm gonna do another one on this side. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna reload. Always reload your brush. Alright, so for, I think I'm going to do it up here because I want to do some cool dripping gold things happening down here. So, instead of holding my brush out this way and doing a leaf that goes like this, I'm going to hold it almost horizontal to the rows where I want my leaf to start. And then I'm going to pivot. And you can always, if you want leaves to have more texture on the outside, you can really pivot your brush. Um, I am not really doing that with this one. I want it to be more of kind of like a flat, big cabbagey rose. So I'm just gonna barely wiggle my brush and then pull that toe out, twist all the way back in, and then end on the toe of my brush again. in and give it some little details and I'm just gonna pull this part out a little bit because it looks a little funny doesn't it there we go now so that this doesn't look like it's floating I'm gonna do one more little leaf this way and then I'm gonna add some cool gold details as well so grab a little bit more paint and then this one I'm going to kind of go over an angle down but same principle I want a nice big leaf and I'm going to push the end of it down under my rose petal so that it looks like it's coming out from behind the rose and I'm going to go ahead and drag the tip the toe of that brush in to create some veins. And you can do as many of those as you want. And there we go. Looks cool so far, right? Um, I did use a three quarter inch face painting shop brush for this. This is again another pink tip. 
and it's a nice size brush so it lends itself to having like a nice big leaf you can of course do smaller leaves you know there's there's no rules as to what you can and can't do as long as you are happy now one thing I want to do if I was on the job and I had kind of a big gap on a kid's cheek I would probably go ahead and do some little like sprigs out just to fill it in it's a really quick way to fill in space and I would do one here as well just right out from that leaf and then I'm gonna do one down this way and then I'm just gonna pull one here as well you can do one on this side and a couple little sprigs. So this would be a very, very quick and easy design to do on a child's face this Halloween. Now, if you want to take it up a notch and make it even cooler, I'm going to show you a few ways you could do that. All right, so this is my Mayron metallic powder. I do not take this to jobs very often anymore. I did when I first started face painting, but then I just kind of simplified my life and stopped taking things that were uh, difficult to use on the job. So this can be a really, really fun thing to use, but since it is a powder, there are some situations at festivals or like windy October days that can be a little harder to use it. So I don't always bring it. But if I were doing this rose and I really wanted to up the coolness factor, I would absolutely use this and I'm gonna show you how. Okay, so I went ahead and I put a little bit of that Mayron gold metallic powder into an extra lid and some water and I am mixing it together until I get the right consistency and pigment. You do not need a lot of powder because it is very, very pigmented. So keep that in mind and definitely experiment with this before you do it. Um, and it's not something I would do on every job, you know, really high volume gigs. You don't wanna be messing around with this. Um, but when you have the time, it's very, very cool. So once I get this mixed up, I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do. And I want it to be very, very liquidy. So I'm using a lot of water. All right, so what I want this to do is drip gold. So it's a really, really cool way. So I've got it really runny, right? So I'm kind of pressing and dragging it so that it drips gold down my rows and it looks like it's melting so I like this for Halloween because it kind of gives like a glam but goth look at the same time so you can see, even though I'm, I have a really, really wet consistency, it's not as wet as if it's going to actually drip on its own down the design. Because one, think about doing this on a face. You don't want to lose control of the paint, but it's wet enough that I can drag and pull and give it that drippy effect. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, this does take a little OC that was a little wet, so it started to drip down. It's fine, but ideally, I don't really want that to happen, especially on the job, because I don't want it to drip on someone's outfit or down their neck or anything like that. So it, it takes a little bit of practice. I would most likely do this for like a client who comes to my house and want something really special rather than at an event, but I do think that it looks really cool. So I kind of splattered it there, which was an accident, but it looks pretty cool over the design, right? <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna keep adding this. 
kind of powdery liquid mixture and let it drip down. I'm feathering it out over here too. I'm gonna use my finger just to rub it out. And I want some on this side so that it's nice and balanced. When I was doing a lot of abstract painting, I loved dripping paint on <laughs> canvases. It was probably one of the things that I enjoyed most about abstract painting. So being able to incorporate that into face painting designs makes me very, very happy. So if you ever do feel like a drip is getting away from you, all you have to do is press and pull and you can stop it. Um, and then you can kind of recorrect it with the brush as to where you want it to go. So it looks kind of cool and creepy and glamorous all at the same time, right? So to pull this in, I'm gonna add just a little bit of gold up here and around our flower so that it doesn't look out of place. And I do like the splatters. Um, so I'm going to just splatter some over the rose as well so that it has a few splatters and it looks kind of like graffiti-esque. I want this to be a little bit more bold. You can always grab a little bit more of the powder and kind of mix it down in to anything that's very, very wet and it's going to give a very, very shiny, metallic, gold feel. So there we go. That is one way to really, really glam this up. Another thing that we can do to make this really glammy and cool is add some gold leaf. So this is another thing that I really, really love, but as you can see, it is a mess, especially on the job. So what I do is with a wet brush, I just dip right into the pot and you can place this down to add another layer of metallic. So this stuff is shiny, 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 and really, really bright and bold, and a great way to add another amazing metallic layer to designs. You just wanna be careful because it's very, very light weight. I would absolutely not take this on the job on a windy day. See how cool it looks. Nice and shiny. So I'm gonna add some of this around the top. And my brush being damp, is enough to push it down into the design, but if you need something else to adhere it, I think the easiest thing is just the global gel is a really good way to adhere the flake. There we go. So 
So one reason I don't take this on the job is because it is so lightweight that if I'm outside, which most of my gigs are outside, it's just going to fly all over the place. So I have not found a way to use it on the job, but this is really an elevated step that I would more likely use for a Halloween appointment with someone than on kids anyways. So after you do the gold step, if you want to clean up anything or have anything pop out a little bit more, just take some black and you can redefine some things. So if you kind of lost some shapes, especially with your leaves, just go ahead and go in and re-emphasize them so they're not getting completely eaten up by the gold. But that is a step that I would probably not do on the job. Another thing you could always do if you wanted this to be a little creepier is just add a few little like webs. So you can add some little spider webs coming out of it. If you want it to have more of a Halloween feel and less of a um, just glamorous rose feel, so that's something I would absolutely do and tend to do to a lot of designs around Halloween is adding just a little bit of spider web out in the corner brings it more into the Halloween realm opposed to just being the fall design. So. There's a few more options of what you can do to change it up. So there we go. I hope you guys like this fall glamorous Halloween inspired rose. If you have any questions, please comment down below and I will see you guys in my next video.